Hey everyone, welcome to the 2021 Solo Print and Play Design Contest Audio Chat. I'm your host, Andy, and today I'm joined by Elias, uh, who's going to talk, be talking to us about his game Interplanetary and everything else related to the Solo Print and Play Contest and board game design in general. Hi, Elias. Hi, everyone. Hi, listeners. Hey, so welcome to the show. If you could get started by just giving us a quick intro about yourself and your experience in board game design. Okay. Actually, I come from video game design stuff and board games are sort of, let's say, a passion of recent years. I always loved board games. I always collected and played board games and professionally or at least semi-professional proper design is something that has started in recent years simply because it just doesn't take that much time compared to video game design or modding or all the other things where more technical challenges are involved. A board game in the end is paper, rules and some people who execute them. So board game stuff, yeah, kind of new game design in general hobby since I was a child. Other than that, yeah, I'm almost 32, no, 33. Um, well, I am living in Germany. I love games in all their facets. I learn to, let's say, play a board game when I was very, very, very little. I don't remember what it was, only that it involved dinosaurs and some T-Rex and you had to collect fruits. If anyone knows what that game is, just post it in the comments or something. And yeah, from there on, I usually wished, for Christmas by the way, I wished something like, I want to have the Spiel des Jahres this year for Christmas, and the collection started to grow and grow. I guess it's kind of a similar story to many other board game geek regulars, right? Yeah, for me, I've been a, I would say, a board game collector or player since the pandemic. So unfortunately, I've not had the experience like you did when you were a child growing up. Okay, I see. I still think this is all kind of new, actually, because if I remember when I was 15, a Euro game would not something would not be something I would recognize as a term or as a genre or however you want to call it, right? So yeah, um, while I might have a different experience there, being lucky enough to grow up in a society which loves board games, I can also tell you that at least at large, the board games were still kind of shit most of the time because, well, you played the same game over and over again and then somebody else had some clone of snakes and ladders so the really cool time for board games i think has started 10 years ago you haven't missed much that's what i'm saying yeah just nine years so that's fine <laughs> yeah so how has the transition been from video games to Two board games and I know that a lot of people not a lot but at least a few may have a similar background or experience okay so I'm not a professional designer I think that much needs to be said right. but I have a software engineering background um, I always modded something so I started with Ambrosia shareware games and hex editors when I was really 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 small and almost didn't speak English so I had little idea of what I was doing, but I knew that if I had this weird hex editor and was increasing the values, my cool spaceship now did double the damage. <laughs> I didn't really understand much, but yeah, fiddling around with stuff. Um, I had lots and lots of good years modding Free Space 2 and Warcraft 3 in that case. So I do have experience with video game design, even though I didn't do it professionally at any point. So to answer your actual question now, I think it's very close because abstractly speaking, at least you have the same goals. Okay. You have different tools, but all the metrics remain the same. Playfulness, engagement, interesting choices, all of that is the same between the mediums because in the end it's an interactive experience. Okay, some of the parts you might offload to the PC, 
which can do complex calculations. So many things that a board gamer would not want to do because it would bog down the game. But the basics are the same. So not much difference there, in my opinion. A lot of video games, and I think this has come up sometimes when I've started reading about this, a lot of video games uh, feel like they are solo games. I know we have a lot of massively multiplayer games as well, but many at times you just play solo. And that brings us to this contest that you're participating in, the solo print and play contest. And if you could tell us what your game is in this year's contest. Yes, certainly. Um, I have designed a monstrously large game called Interplanetary, which is about becoming an interplanetary species. And to make matters a little bit more cuter, um, that species in question are squirrel-like creatures called squeaks. So, mm -hmm. in short, you are in charge of a whole planet's space program and your job is to lead everyone to the stars. In a peaceful manner, I might add. Peaceful exploration. No laser guns or Star Wars <laughs> stuff. Okay. So how far have you progressed with your game this time? Well, it's done because otherwise I would have been kicked out of the contest by now. We have to be in component ready state, right? Yeah. Since September something or August, I don't remember August, anymore. Yeah. So uh, it had to be playable back then. And I can tell you it was pretty close, but I made it. So the game is playable. Everyone can try it out. Um, I think we have reached the sixth iteration now. So it's version six. No massive changes had to be introduced. It's a lot of typo fixing, mm -hmm. one or two new mechanics, but all very minor stuff. So I'm really happy with, uh, let's say, quality and feedback thus far. Uh, shout out and thanks to everyone listening who played that already. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys and girls. I don't know who you are. But uh, yeah, has been wonderful thus far. Great, great. And has this been your first contest in Board Game Geek, specifically the solo print and play, or did you participate earlier as well? I did participate in two other contests because I had to flex my creative muscles during the pandemic time. Yes. Um, so I did participate a few years back in one of the Roll and Writes with another very complicated, very niche game. And last year, or this year, because it was rather long, I participated in the 54 card game contest, which was really fun, by the way. Um, but yeah, that's it for Big Gigi contests, at least. So other stuff like game jams on video game stuff um, happened in the past, but nothing so focused on board games. And nothing focused on solo yet. So this is the first solo game contest I have been joined, or I have joined. Okay. So you did mention Star Wars, I believe. And uh, <laughs> is that why you chose this theme in particular for a solo game? Uh, no, absolutely not. Um, so I love science fiction. And I also like Star Wars and Star Trek and Expanse and Battlestar and Dune and the whatnot. But I also like this near future realistic space stuff and there is one board game rather famously actually which tries to emulate a realistic or semi-realistic space program and that board game is called high frontier there are very few board games like it and it is notoriously difficult and I always wanted to do something like Kerbal Space Program for years, but I never had any idea how to realize that. And eventually I played this game High Frontier, which is again very complicated, rather frustrating, but really interesting for those who put in the time. And that kind of triggered some ideas because it showed me how several design problems could be solved in an interesting way in a board game while Basically, I could insert my ideas of how a game should be and how it should feel. So it's kind of a 50% steal of something else and 50% my own stuff with the intention of creating something similar to it that feels rather different and makes its own mark on this particular subgenre. So it was mostly basically a design challenge. I wanted to be 
or test out if that would work. Could I make such a game? And I'd also like the theme of space stuff. But no, no Star Wars motivation factors into this. Okay, okay, cool. You, you've also been writing designer diaries. Uh, yeah, I see actually. that you have five of them. So could you just share a little bit more about that and what okay. motivated you to do that? Okay, I started with that from in my during my previous contest. Um, I think these should be done by actually every contest participant because they are so useful. Um, they serve multiple purposes. First, they get people hyped, okay? Um, you post about your game, you post about features, you post about components, so people can actually take a look at what you're doing and you can start building up a little community, which actually has happened for Interplanetary. So there are a few people who follow that thread regularly and post in it and they even answer rule questions that other people have. I absolutely love it. Anyway, design diaries, so goal number one, they create hype, okay? They create interest. The second thing they achieve is they force you to focus because you can always learn something about what you are doing yourself if you try, if you try to explain it to somebody else. So if I write a, z a design diary about some, for example, mecha mechanic or theme or problem I'm currently dealing with, I have to phrase all that stuff, I have to write it down, and that often generates ideas. And the third thing is um, it ge just generates activity, okay? A game that is active is always interesting and you have some sort of schedule because, oh, I want to have some goal this week so I can write about it. So let's uh, keep the motivation high and yeah. In short, I think every designer should do something like that because it's super interesting to read other designers' thoughts about their games. It is also good to build up an audience for the game and it keeps your motivation high because you have always some weekly goal or something like it, depending on your schedule. So it worked really well for my previous game, and I think it also worked pretty well for this one, so I see no reason to stop doing that. Certainly, I think it's a very good uh, initiative that you have. Just a question on the, the graphics and the rules. Is that something that you're working on solo? Or... Yeah, it, it's, all, it's all me. So, uh, like I said, it's kind of a monster of a game. 30 page rule book. Yeah, it's a big font, but still it's a 30 page rule book. And I was very open about this. For, so everyone who was interested uh, in the game while I was working on it was warned, so to speak. Um, yeah, it's a complicated game. It was really close when I had to make the deadline. I thought, well, ooh, this could be very, very close. And it was very close because the day after I released it, I went hiking for a week. Mm -hmm. So it was a hard deadline. I don't know how many hours I have put into designing this game now. Way too much probably, but it's fun. I like it. It was fun designing it. It's fun seeing the reactions. So no matter how much sweat, tears and so on is in that game, I do feel it is worth it. Great, great. Have you been playing solo games as well or is it more uh, the multiplayer games? That's actually a longer story, so I better start <laughs> at the beginning. Um, I was always of the opinion that solo games are kind of stupid, okay? Um, if I want to play something on my own, I can play the video game because the video game is more cool. Then two things happened. Um, first, I grew up, got a job, and my job forces me to sit in front of the computer all the time. So uh, as a teenie, I never had the idea of, well, I could be just not interested in the computer in the evening, okay? That was point number one. So, okay, maybe I want to play something, but I just don't want to go to the PC and sit down. And the second thing is that a special little game came along, which is named Under Falling Skies, which has been picked up and it's a professional product now, but I played the nine card version of it free and you can download it and it comes highly recommended. And it completely changed my view on solo games. Like, this is actually fun. This is interesting. Um, this can be an incredible challenge and puzzle. 
and I can spend like half an hour staring on this board and then do some move and then, oh no, oh, I'm so stupid. So it is such an incredible design that it single-handedly changed my opinion on this whole thing, which is kind of why I am now developing a solo game. Yeah, I've read a lot about Under Falling Skies and I've seen a lot of cool pictures. Unfortunately, I've not played it, but I think I should add it to my list sometime. Yeah, like I said, the nine card version is perfectly fine. It's free. You can download it from Board Game Geek. You just need a few cubes and dice. It's really good. It's transforming, so to speak. Yeah, I should probably play it before the next solo printed play contest to get inspired. Potentially. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Boring. Cool. So then that leads me on to the next question in terms of what, in your opinion, you know, makes a good solo game a great solo game okay what makes a good one or what makes a good one great a good one great because i think most games are good but okay unless you've played a lot of games that you said as in your childhood were not really good but i'm okay. thinking most of the modern board games are good okay um i think it depends entirely on the genre so let's stick to solo games i've written at length on my stance on basically how to do solo, especially in these diaries. I think it is super important to respect the player in a solo game um, because the player invests time solo, okay? It's not a group experience. And most of the time it's about overcoming some challenge or achieving some score. So there's always some puzzle-like component to it. But if the player has this session where he or she is playing the game and then there is a bad dice roll or some card is drawn that ruins the session, it kind of wastes your time. If you have a group of players, this randomness factor is funny and everyone is getting the bad luck roll or the evil card at some point, so it's distributed. In a solo game, it's not. You're the only player and if you're losing or do, don't do that well, due to sheer randomness, it's kind of disrespectful to your time. So I think those are the two components. Being a super interesting puzzle and challenge, okay, because otherwise it's not fun, but that challenge also needs to respect you and your time and your approach. Again, Under Falling Skies is actually really interesting as an example. You roll dice, okay? Everything in this game is basically driven by dice, but what you do with the few dice you have is such an important choice. There are so many options and each option has a consequence and an interesting one that this random element just enhances the game because it does respect you, okay? And if you have some game where you're basically just drawing a few cards and then it says, well, you lose, I don't know, the torpedo hit you, you exploded, I think it's not really fun in the long term because, like I said, it's not really respecting your time. If a solo game is basically asking you to be lucky, to do good, I think it's not a good game. So yeah, the greatest solo games have some sort of randomness y which you can't plan on or have to work around with because it's interesting if something is uncertain. But following that, you have to make hard and interesting decisions. And that makes it great, hopefully. Yeah, that's a very interesting take on. Uh, I, I've not heard of that one before, but respecting the players seems very true because uh, they're playing by themselves. So I think it's something that's really important. And the way that I thought about it is that the game has to be challenging enough as well. Yeah, but uh, challenge, think, sorry for interrupting, challenge yeah. can come from so many different sources, okay? Um, yeah. If I ask you to, well, let's say you have a stack of cards, okay? And the game is about drawing the right card from the top. And you got one draw and the stack of cards has like 10 cards that are evil and one card that is good. It says you win, okay? That game is challenging because you most of the time you don't win but you also have absolutely no control over it. It's also yeah. not fun. And the majority of sessions you lose without having any effect on the game. Yeah, it's a silly and extreme example, but that's mm. what I mean by it, okay? Challenge 
isn't everything. Challenge is it is something required but not something basic. A game is something w well what is the fun in a game okay it's choice you're making choices mm. all the time in any game no matter yeah. what it is. It is interaction which means okay you have at least two options so it's interactive which means you make a choice. Those choices need to be hard or interesting or have interesting consequences. I agree with all of that but if no matter which choice you make you just lose in a majority of sessions with no way for you to do better, I think the mm. game is disrespectful to your time. And yeah, yeah, that may now be more challenging because you lose in more cases, but it's mm. not fun, okay? At least in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree with that. I think it's it has to be challenging, but it also has to give you that choice that you can avoid the uh, the result in which you lose because it shouldn't be completely out of your hands as well. Yeah, you should have a say in it, so to speak, right? Yeah. Um, I think the best solo games are games where you usually lose, but feel like if you just had done this one thing like five turns back a little different, you would surely have won. So they basically leave you with a little wanting more okay you you have this ah i made a stupid mistake next time i'm gonna do better something like that i think those games are the great solo games that achieve that feeling where you feel like you lost because you made a mistake or you were not optimal or you didn't do it right i think that is the trick yeah very very true very good um and then uh, i think if you have any other final comments or advice for the listeners, most like the other game designers? Well, I think the one big thing I talked about, I already mentioned, really go and play n the nine card version of Under Falling Skies. It's again, transformative. So go and play that. It's a brilliant game. Other than that, I would be honored if you would play mine. Um, yeah, and have fun out there. I mean, there are so many interesting games. Design stuff, play stuff, learn stuff, discuss with others. There are many intelligent and great and awesome and nice designers in this community. So make use of that. All right. Thank you very much, Elias, for chatting with me today. It was really enlightening to hear your views on solo games and also hear about your game Interplanetary. So thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, the honor is all mine, Andy. Bye. I will try to have more interesting chat sessions with other designers that are participating in the 2021 Solo Print and Play Board Game Design Contest on Board Game Geek. So keep listening. Thank you.